If your partner is depressed, this video is for you because I know that sometimes you feel like there just is not enough room in your relationship for your emotional experience. I'm Rachel Sloan. I'm an NLP practitioner and a relationship coach. And today I want to show you how you may be building walls around yourself to protect your own intense and painful emotions in your relationship. And I also want to show you how you can safely create room, create space, for your own emotional experience so you don't have to keep everything bottled up inside anymore. This came up for me recently as I was talking to a friend and she was explaining what happens with her husband. And I, I think this happens to a lot of women and I know this can be true for some of you men out there too, but women in particular tend to be socially conditioned just by our society to be people pleasers, to put other people's happiness ahead of our own, to put other people's emotional well-being ahead of our own. And so we're naturally prioritizing that. I say naturally, but I mean we've been socially conditioned to prioritize that. And then on top of that, when your partner is depressed, it's really easy to feel like your own emotional experience is kind of less important, right? It's like a little bit paltry, my fear or sadness or guilt compared to like the magnitude and intensity of the depression and the emotions that the depressed partner is feeling. So what we tend to do as partners in these relationships is hold our own emotions in. We're calm, we're supportive, we're loving, we're not letting all this madness that's happening inside out into the world. And then maybe you go see a therapist either as a couple or on your own or maybe you start reading about self-care and you start to realize that it's not really healthy to keep all these emotions bottled up. And you're like, okay, I need to let this out. I need to be, be vulnerable and process these emotions so I can let go of them. And so you try to do that with your partner, right? You try to share, you try to open up. And at first this might feel amazing because when you start to open up and let some of that out, you finally feel like you can actually be intimate with that person. When your partner's depressed, you often feel so disconnected. And that disconnect is exacerbated by the fact that you are completely hiding your own emotional experience. So you open up, you start to let it out, you start to feel connected. And what often happens is your partner shuts down. They can't handle your emotions. And this can be for a couple of reasons. It might be, I think it's really common that the depressed person actually feels guilty for your pain because they believe that they're causing it with their depression and that they're putting you through this and maybe they can't handle that. Or maybe their own emotional pain is just so much right now that they can't take on any more from you. But for whatever reason, that person shuts down, backs away, and you're left, right? There you are. You've put all of this painful emotion out on the table and now you're alone with it. And it's scary and it hurts and you don't know what to do. And what happens and what I was, you know, the experience my friend was telling me about is she finds herself putting up walls then, right? Her walls just got a little bit thicker to protect her emotionally because she got vulnerable, she put herself out there, and she was abandoned. So she builds up a little stronger, stiffer wall and is less likely to try to access those emotions. They get bottled back up, they don't get processed, they don't get released, they don't get worked through. And this is not good, right? This is not good for your own mental and emotional health and it can send you down the path to your own nervous breakdown, to your own mental break. So we need to deal with these emotions. What I want to show you is the, you know, it sounds so logical, right? That we open up to our partner and that they should support us and help us through these emotions. It sounds nice, but it's really flawed thinking because in this situation, you are putting all of the responsibility for processing that emotion, for dealing with that emotion onto your partner. And I want to be really clear here. I'm not saying that you shouldn't open up to your partner or share your emotions with them. Absolutely so important for a healthy relationship to have that kind of open emotional communication. What I'm saying is that when you do open up to them, if they can't handle it, that's okay. What I'm saying is you can ask them to support you through this, but don't be so attached to whether or not they are able to give that support. For a moment, imagine this scenario. Imagine that you knew when you had a painful emotion, when you had anxiety or guilt or fear come up, Imagine you knew exactly what to do with it, how to sit in that feeling, how to feel that feeling, how to allow it and how to move past it and forward with your life. If you knew that you could do that, how would you show up 
when you went to share with your partner? How would you sit down? How would you handle it when you shared your emotions and they shut down? You wouldn't feel abandoned. You would say, okay, he's not ready for this, but I know exactly what to do. I don't have to take this anger and bottle it back up because I know how to deal with it myself. I don't need this other person to make me feel better. I know how to handle this emotion on my own. What a powerful place that would be. This is exactly what I teach my clients. I give them a step-by-step -step system for handling difficult, intense, and painful emotions so that no matter what, whether we ever work together again or not, the next time it comes up, the sadness, the fear, the anger, the overwhelm, they know exactly what to do with it. They have a step-by-step -step system to follow to process those emotions in a healthy, safe way, let them go, and move on. That's the work we do. It's beyond the scope of this video to give you that whole process in detail, but I'm gonna to explain to you in general how it works, and I'm gonna give you the first step in detail so that you can start to work through these emotions when they come up without being reliant on your partner. So the first step is to feel the feeling, and that's the hardest part because most of us wanna just skip over that because the feeling isn't very pleasant. This part's really important though because if you're not willing to feel your emotions, you can never really get to the bottom of them. What are the underlying thoughts creating those feelings? As long as you're scared of the emotion, you can't understand the thought, and then it's really hard to make a change in the thought or the emotion. So the first step is to allow that feeling. That's what I'm gonna work with you on today. I'm gonna to tell you exactly how to feel that feeling in a safe way so that it can't take over, that it can't dominate, that it can't turn into something more frightening or more powerful. So that's step one, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that in just a minute. Feel the feeling, allow the emotion. Once you've done that, the intensity of that feeling actually goes down just a little bit. And that gives you space to get curious with your thoughts. And you can explore your mind and start to understand what thought is producing that feeling. From there, you can notice how that feeling changes your actions. How do you show up? How are you with your partner? How are you in work? How are you in every aspect of your life when you're thinking that thought and feeling that feeling? How do you show up? What are your actions? How do those actions produce the results? What are you getting? Once you have this clear picture, you have the thought, you have the feeling, how it plays out in your life, you can decide if that's a thought you wanna keep or not. Do you like the results you're getting? If you don't wanna keep it, then we get to do some fun looking into the future. Who do you wanna be? How do you wanna think? How do you wanna feel and show up instead? And it's often too big of a leap to go from where you are now to that place that you wanna be. It's great to have that image and it's important to know where you're going. But to get there, you have to take little steps. And that involves finding new thoughts that you're gonna practice and think on purpose that are a little bit better than the way you're thinking now, but maybe not quite as unbelievable as the thought you'd like to get to someday. So it's making little shifts in the way you think. And all we're doing in this process is slowly rewiring your brain. We're creating new neural pathways because right now you have a set of thoughts and beliefs that you practice a lot, whether you know it or not, right? You have all these kind of automatic thoughts running through your head all the time. And the beautiful thing about the brain is it is incredibly adaptable and able to change. So if you don't like the thoughts you're thinking kind of on autopilot right now, you can over time intentionally shift them by choosing new thoughts, laying down new neural pathways and wearing them in with lots and lots of practice. So that is a very generalized description of the process and there are a lot of tools that I can share with you along the way and I'll share many of them in these YouTube videos that will help you with each step of that process and make it a lot easier and less intimidating. But today we're gonna to deal with the first part, which like I said, is usually the hardest. Feeling the feeling. How do you feel your feelings? Again, a lot of women tell me that they've spent so long being the calm, collected, together one that they don't even really know what they're feeling. And it's scary when they do start to open up, it feels so intense, like it could just take over, and then how do I get anything done? How do I make sure the kids get fed and the laundry gets done and work is finished? Yeah, I don't have time or space for these emotions. So here's a tool to process your emotions very quickly. This is not a complete process. This is just how you start. And this is something you can practice over and over and it will help you 
handle emotions quickly so that as they come up in your day-to-day -day life, you can work through them a little bit at a time without ever having that like overwhelming, vulnerable breakdown that feels like you just don't have time for it. Here's what you do. Emotion comes up. Let's say it's anxiety. Notice, turn your attention inward, notice the physical sensations in your body. What do you feel in your stomach? For me, it's like a counterclockwise circular feeling. I get pressure in my chest, tightness in my throat, and this like pulling between my eyebrows. For me, that's how anxiety feels. Might be different for you. Re say those sensations to yourself, out loud if you can, or in your head. I feel spinning in my stomach, pressure in my chest, tightness in my throat, tension between my eyes. This is how anxiety feels in my body. Repeat that to yourself half a dozen times, maybe 10 times, however long it takes for those physical sensations to ease up just a little bit for you to get a little relief from your anxiety or from your fear or from your anger. This works with any intense emotion and you can do it moment to moment in your life. It takes like 90 seconds. When that emotion comes up, take a deep breath, tension inward, name the physical sensations to yourself. This works on a couple of levels. It helps the primitive uh, survivalist part of your brain understand that you've kind of heard the alarm call. That emotion is your body trying to warn you that there's some action you need to take to stay safe. So when you recite these physical sensations, that part of your brain's like, oh good, she's got it, can turn down the volume. It also teaches the more analytic part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, that emotions aren't these big, scary, mysterious things. They are just physical sensations in your body. You can handle that. Think of all the physical sensations you handle in your body. I'm sorry, again, speaking towards women, but come on, like there is a lot of discomfort that we go through, right? Like, a little upset stomach, a little pressure in your chest, a little pull in between the eyebrows, like what is that? Not a big deal, I can handle that, okay? So try this exercise. Again, this is not a huge opening yourself up to great vulnerability. This is something you can do on a daily basis, little bite-sized pieces, process emotions in your body. It seems small, but over time it really will, well immediately it will turn down the volume and over time it will start to help you build real emotional resilience and feel those feelings in a healthy, safe way where they can take charge. If you would like some more support with this, please check out the description below. There's a link um, that will give you a longer video explaining exactly how and why this process works and a couple of guided audio recordings and a worksheet that you can use to practice this exercise if you get stuck or find that like, it's not working for you. Check out those recordings and they will help you and work through it. I guide you through it step by step. Okay, the first step is to feel your feelings in a safe way and be able to deal with them on your own, not relying on your partner or anyone else to handle those scary, painful emotions for you. You can do it. You have all of the tools you need right there in your own brain. Feeling your feelings is not some weird, mysterious thing. It's just noticing. What are the physical sensations in my body this is how that emotion feels in my body. You can even add in, I'm willing to feel this emotion in my body. Give it a try. Let me know how it's going. Please share in the comments. What emotion did you try this on? How did it work for you? I want to hear from you. You've got this.